Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now, there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard, and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology, and there are many others that are available to you. So, I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. The most common ear infection we see in children is acute otitis media. One variant of this is acute otitis media with effusion, which is most likely to have a bacterial etiology and thus most likely to respond to antibiotics. A number of respiratory viruses are known to cause similar infections, but since there's no pathogen-specific therapy for viral etiology, there's really no reason to attempt culture for viruses. The specimen we most often receive in the laboratory for culture is a swab. But wait, this infection occurs behind the eardrum or tympanum, and there is no way a swab will be pushed into that area to sample this infection site. So whatever you have on that swab is not representative of the disease process. Therefore, either resist accepting it for culture or be sure to place a statement on your report that says, interpret these results with caution. The specimen of choice for acute otitis media is a tympanocentesis, not a swab. So basically, the only time a swab can be used for effective diagnosis of otitis media is when fluid is absorbed from a draining myringotomy tube or if otorrhea is present. For example, if the eardrum is ruptured and fluid is draining from the site, then you may use the swab. Even then, the external ear canal needs to be cleansed and a tiny swab inserted to absorb the fluid. Proper labeling of this drainage is critical for the laboratory. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection, and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Tympanocentesis fluid should be placed into a sterile container and transported immediately to the lab at room temperature. Swabs should be transported in a transport device at room temperature within two hours of collection. We know the common causes of acute otitis media, streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, Moraxella catarralis, Streptococcus pyogenes, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, and Aloyococcus otitidis. Empiric therapy, not culture, should be considered. 